Good afternoon. How is everyone? My name is Dinesh De Silva, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you join us today. I'm the founder and the CEO Good of Netstripes. I'll tell you a bit about Netstripes uh, in a little while. And it's an absolute pleasure to have you Look, I think um, I'm the founder and the CEO of Netstripes. I'll tell you is there an echo coming through? Uh, if there is, let me know in the chat uh, because I know it's uh, on YouTube and it probably is coming through. Uh, fabulous. Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate that. By the way, uh, let me, until I fit, let me first fix that. Okay. It, are you still having the echo? Let me know in the chat. No, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, it's an absolute pleasure to have you join us today. And um, we are going live on YouTube as well. So the good thing about that is at the end of this session, if you, if you missed out anything, you can go back to YouTube and you can watch those bits uh, that you may have missed out on. Having said that, um, um, uh, I know there are quite a few people still trying to log on. Um, uh, often people have uh, difficulty with technology, but in the meantime, um, why don't we um, connect with each other? You know, um, typically if I ran a web a seminar, I would be able to walk up to you and say hello and introduce uh, ourselves to each other. We can't do that, however, Virtually, we still can do it through LinkedIn. So uh, why don't you go to LinkedIn while we uh, wait um, a couple of minutes uh, for some of the others to log in and why don't we connect? Okay, so go into LinkedIn uh, while we wait. I'll be starting sharp at 404. Uh, get on uh, LinkedIn, connect with me. Tell me about your business as you connect with me. And uh, I'd be delighted, uh, and I'll certainly connect back with you, and it'll be uh, fabulous to get to know you that way. I know I can't see you. Uh, that's uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, doing it virtually, but there are so many advantages, as we know as well. All right. Um, I want to run this session as an interactive session. So um, I know uh, webinars can be boring. Um, you know, you are at your desk or at home, wherever you are watching this. Um, often um, uh, people tell me their webinar out as well, but I want to run this as an interactive session. So I'll be asking you a bunch of questions. Uh, I'll be asking you at times for your opinion, please put your hand up. Let's test the hand up feature. Can everybody go there uh, to the hand up? Please raise your hands, please to see. I just want to make sure that it is working. Uh, so thank you for those who put, put your hands up. Uh, I would like encourage every one of you to put your hand up so that I know that's working. Um, also, um, if you have any questions, go to the Q&A and ask every one of your questions. I have a lot to cover today, and I'll come to each of your questions at the end of the session. If you do, however, want to say something, uh, and when I ask a question, you may want to chat, please go to the chat, but make sure uh, when you go to the chat at the bottom, uh, where it says two, it says all panelists and attendees, so that when you write something, everybody can see it, not just me. That way, I think, will be way better for us uh, in the way we participate um, uh, and collaborate with each other. So that is great. Um, again, I hope you've uh, taken advantage of going to LinkedIn and connecting with, uh, with us. And please uh, connect with others who are there. You may want to put a post. Uh, or connect um, right on a post that I have re uh, shared recently, um, and, um, and, and I'm sure others can uh, do the same. All right, fabulous. Um, let me tell you uh, so, uh, very quick, quickly about Netstripes. 
Next Stripes is an Aussie uh, tech startup. We um, started in 2014 to resolve a huge problem in Australia where small um, and medium-sized businesses struggled with this issue of digital disruption. Uh, a million businesses had uh, closed down in the five years to 2004. 14 based uh, according to the ABS and that was a huge problem. Uh, not only that businesses had closed down, but there were a lot of businesses who were also struggling and we wanted to address this situation. I'm proud to say today we have built uh, probably the world's premier system for small and medium enterprises to transition from their traditional business models to becoming digitally successful businesses. We've worked with over 5,000 businesses pre-COVID. Uh, this is one-on-one -on -one through uh, the programs we've run, through the systems, uh, through this uh, NetStripe system we have created as well. And uh, I'm delighted to say that, you, you know, like you have joined us at this webinar since the last few months, we've had over 4,000 of you joining us at this webinar. So we take it as an absolute honor and take it as a very big responsibility. When we started NetStripes, we had one vision and that vision was to empower a million small and medium enterprises to accelerate their growth through digital innovation. So this webinar on innovation for profitability is very apt. Um, as you know, during these times, if we can help you to, uh, to survive COVID and then to accelerate growth um, uh, as things improve, it'll be an absolute pleasure for us. And, and that's us living our vision and we know as you grow and do well you create jobs for your community and around the around the world as well because there are people that uh, people work with with others offshore as well these days you know and and we know millions of jobs can be created um, through the growth we have seen this in practice because of the work we've done with so many small and medium enterprises. Um, this system works across multiple industries. We've worked across nearly every industry and it has proved uh, uh, successful for so many entrepreneurs. I will go through some individual success sto stories on innovation, small business innovation in particular, um, as we go through. Now, uh, does this, work for everybody? Does everybody who come for a webinar succeed? The answer is no, because there are key lessons. These, this is about digital transformation. Transformation, whether it was digital or business or whether it was our health or personal transformation, it's about making a decision. Once we've made that decision, we got to take action. So a lot of people don't make that decision because they're in a different part of their journey. But if, if this is for you and you want to make a decision to move from your traditional ways of doing business to becoming a dig digitally successful business, a decision has to be made. Once a decision is made, we got to take action. And we got to then take the right action and then to be a bit patient and stay the course until we achieve our goals. A lot of us uh, make the decisions, but some of us don't take the action. And those who take some, some of those who, who even take the action often get impatient and don't stay the course because we don't have the discipline sometimes. So if uh, you are one of these people who really believe that you wanna move from your traditional ways of doing business, these are three things that we must do. Today, uh, what I hope to cover uh, for you is the following. Have a quick read of it. Um, and again, if you have any questions, go to the Q&A and ask. I won't go through each of these. I have a lot to cover. I have over 20 years of experience working with global companies, working with Australian public listed companies and helping them to transition 
using technology uh, to become digitally successful businesses or, or technologically successful businesses. And I've done this uh, right through my career. So let's start with innovation. What is innovation? I want you to write down what you think is innovation, okay? Uh, because um, spend a moment to think what innovation is for you. Um, and I, I will give you my definition of innovation, but it's so important for you to think what you think innovation is. So why don't you do that? Write, um, you can go to the chat and write it on the chat. Why do everybody who is here, right? Uh, I know everybody won't do it, but, but I encourage you to go to the chat and write what you think innovation is. Thank you, Joseph has already written. Joseph has said innovation is doing things differently. Thank you. Anyone else? I know people are shy sometimes and I don't want to force you, but I'd really encourage you to go and write what innovation is because this def us to, it's very important for us to define what innovation is, especially when we are a small business. You know, small and medium sized businesses don't have a lot of resources. So we have to be very effective how we use our resources. So let me share with you my definition of innovation. Innovation is making little improvements in your business on a continuous basis that makes your customer's life better, okay? So let me repeat that. Innovation is making little improvements in your business on a continuous basis that makes your customer's life better. Now, you might think um, that that doesn't look really hard, hard to do. It is absolutely the case. You don't have to create the new iPhone or the next iPhone. Uh, Apple, if you think about it, they uh, were formed in 1974 and they created the iPhone in 2007. How many years is that? Is that 43 something years? Absolutely. So it, even Apple, who's, all, who's always been known to be an innovative company, did not create the iPhone immediately. They took 40 years to do that or over 40 years to do it. So you don't have to do the same. But if you think about it, Apple were always known for being an innovative company because they always built products and services that made the customer's life better. So what are the things that you can do today that makes your customer's life better. So there you go. I hope you like that uh, definition of innovation. It's a simple definition I have shared with over uh, 3,000 people who attended my digital boot camps. Uh, those are two day events. I know uh, there are a couple of you who've attended the digital boot camp and, um, and, you, um, and that's, um, this definition has been used by so many business owners. Man landed on the moon in 1969, correct? Most of you may remember it. Some of you were not born, but you would have definitely read about it. Now, you would have expected by 2020 for us, mankind, to conquer space because in the 70s and the 80s, there was so much activity around the world when it came to space exploration. But think about it, nothing much has really happened. So we would have completely expected a, a new and much greater level of innovation in this area. However, what really changed was the internet. What happened was the internet. 
So while we would have expected space exploration to change, maybe for man to go to the moon several times more, maybe to have a, a international space station that we went to, maybe for us to conquer even Mars, that didn't happen. But what happened was the internet. The advent of the internet meant that we even got the selfie. Now, who would have thought that there would be a word called selfie in our lexicon. Think of the massive change that has happened. If I was told or somebody was told in the 80s that man will conquer Mars by 2020, we may have believed it. While I was at the university, I would have believed it too. But think about it, if somebody told me I'll have a little device the size of a pack of cards, as Elon Musk uh, describes it, in my pocket that can connect me with people across the world then, and allow me to do things that I would never dream of doing, like taking photos and talking to people around the world, seeing their photos and reactions, and do my business from my home, uh, working with people around the world, nobody would have expected that. Look, in, looking at this photo alone, we know how much has changed. So this is what really changed. But what is driving innovation? What's driving the acceleration of innovation? And uh, some of you may know this, it's Moore's law. Gordon Moore was the founder of Intel or was one of the co-founders of Intel. And Gordon Moore said in 19, um, uh, I think in, in the early 70s that the number of transistors on a microchip will double every two years. Forget the number, numbers, the power of a microchip will double every two or so years. And it is this that has changed the world. This is what has disrupted so many industries, disrupted so many businesses, and created all these innovations that we know today. So let me share with you what I mean here. Computing cost performance because of Moore's law, because of the number of transistors on a microchip doubling every two years has gone to near zero. Think, look at this. This is by 2020, it's less than a cent, okay? So a cost per million transistors is less than a cent. And look at the price it was not too long ago. And most of you were born, most of you would have been working during this time. Um, and, um, and this is what happened to Kodak. Kodak, in fact, invented the digital camera in 1977, but they didn't understand what was going to happen. The cost of computing was going to massively come down and the power was going to increase. And Kodak, when they, uh, the geniuses of Kodak who created the digital camera, when they presented it to the board of directors and senior management, they laughed at it. They said, how is this going to replace our current revenue stream. So we know Kodak died a natural death. Bandwidth cost performance has been dropping massively. Look at that. In 1992 uh, to 1996 uh, timeframe, it was $1,200 or more. It's uh, less than a dollar now. And, and we all know the power on this, and, and the reliability has increased massively as well. This is what happened to BlackBerry and Nokia with the advent of the smartphone and Steve Jobs understood this and took advantage of it. Nokia, as you saw, uh, see here was, was valued at a $51 billion uh, at, in their heyday. What happened to Blockbuster, Netflix, were in deep trouble in early 2000, in 2000, in the early months of the, uh, 2000, and went to meet Blockbuster. 
asking them to buy them for 50 million or make, make a major investment in them for 50 million. Blockbuster CEO and, and, and another person, they laughed at Netflix when they went uh, to, their, um, to, to their boardrooms of Blockbuster. You know, they were a huge company. Netflix was nobody then, and they laughed at Netflix. Blockbuster went uh, bankrupt, as we know, uh, filed for bankruptcy. Storage cost performance. Look at this. Storage has gone to near zero, absolute zero from what it was. So computing cost is going down. Storage cost is going down. Bandwidth is going down. As a result of this, millions of businesses across the world are, are closing down because they are not changing fast enough. And these are big names. Both closed all their... Um, retail stores across the world, definitely in Australia. There are still a few in the US. Uh, EB Games, um, you know, you wouldn't have expected EB, EB Games to close down, but they have too, right? And so people like Dropbox and iTunes have taken absolute advantage of them. So the moral of the story here is that inability to change from traditional ways of doing business because we want to protect the way we do things in the face of change around these businesses have been their downfall. Now, is it only these businesses? I've just used a few businesses here, but millions of business, businesses have closed down. Each of us here may be impacted. I hope your business is not impacted, but if you think you are still operating in your traditional ways of doing business, it is time we look at innovation, to spur your growth. And I'll share with you small businesses who have done that, not just big businesses like some of the examples I've shared. So what are we seeing in the next 10 years? I wanna take a quick squeeze at this so that you uh, get a good picture of it and you can plan your business based on that so that you know where we are heading in the next 10 years and then make plans based on it. So what's going to happen, we've discussed what's on the left here, faster, cheaper computational power, okay? And that's, uh, and these new technologies that you're seeing in the middle is going to create this convergence of technologies. And the convergence of technologies is going to create new business models, okay? New business models and ecosystems that we will operate in. We are already seeing the cloud and the way the cloud has changed, the way the smartphone and this whole mobile computing revolution has changed the way the world works. So um, we are going to see sensors. We're going to see devices that are connected, connecting everything. If you look at your cars now, each of these modern day cars have about 400 sensors telling us what's happening, what's not happening. You might be using an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, for instance. And if you think about them, they got sensors to tell you what your heartbeat is, whether you are running or jogging or walking and what speed you're doing these things at. Uh, you might have these sensors in your know, refrigerators and, and in your washing machines, and this is going to happen. Networks. We've heard of 5G coming into Australia. 5G will make the NBN completely outdated in, in, in time to come. And it, it's, it's gonna happen super, super fast. The new iPhone that has been launched uh, can take uh, advantage of the highest 5G speeds that we don't even have in Australia right now. That's only going to come to Australia next year. Uh, so artificial intelligence, I don't have to tell you about this. You've seen that uh, already in operation. When you go to Google, when you go to Facebook, they use our AI, they use in, uh, AI in their algorithms in everything people do. Okay, so that's going to happen. The way the stock markets around the world operate is based on algorithms. There's a lot of artificial intelligence in terms of machine learning and, and natural language progress, uh, programming and visual computing that is being used. Um, robotics, 3D printing. 3D printing is going to change the way manufacturing happens. So, you know, we've been 
completely dependent on China for our manufacturing. Now 3D printing can completely change that paradigm for us. Uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, synthetic biology and blockchain. I won't go into all that. These are some of the things that you can keep an eye on. Now, if you go to YouTube, you go and search under artificial intelligence and type your industry, you will see what's happening. So if you're in the finance industry, if you're a builder, if you're a lawyer, uh, whatever industry you're in, go to, uh, um, go to uh, uh, YouTube and say artificial intelligence in law, you will see what's happening. Artificial intelligence in the building materials is unbelievable. So go and have a look at it. Um, and I know some of you are in travel. Go and have a, check that out. See what's happening. And not just artificial intelligence, sensors, robotics, 3D printing. Look at everything. And you, your knowledge levels will go to another level. Your, the way you look at things will change completely. Having said that, the three major things I see are connectivity. Connectivity is the internet of things and, and this whole advent of 5G and, and um, the whole world connected through the internet. Currently, it's only about 50% of the world that is connected to the internet. Not too long ago, it was 30% of the world. That, this was only about two years ago. So <laughs> that, number has nearly doubled in a two-year period. If, and I think currently about 55% of the world is connected to the internet. So things are changing super fast. Um, um, if you, uh, Elon Musk has a program that is connecting, um, um, providing Wi-Fi through satellites. I'll be talking about it very soon. Uh, we spoke about 5G. Uh, Google has a program, Facebook has a program, uh, Amazon has a, a rocket company that is chasing this as well. So there are a lot of activity happening here. Before we know it, the, we'll have a world connected. So we have artificial intelligence, virtual reality and augmented reality. And these three technologies will create massive play in, in the way we live and the way we work. So I spoke about connecting the world in terms of connectivity. SpaceX, which is Elon Musk's company, has this program called the Starlink Constellation Program, where they're going to have these mini satellites across the world that is going to connect the world and provide Wi-Fi to the world. Imagine that. So somebody in Africa can have the same connectivity that somebody in one of the most developed countries in the world. They tell me that Africa is the next frontier. If you think about it, uh, you might think that's a bit fanciful, but uh, if you really think about it, China was a basket case 30 years ago. Uh, so was India. These e economies are the, some of the biggest economies of the world today. Okay, uh, the, because uh, technology had moved uh, so much uh, and the, uh, China and the Indian economies weren't doing well, but the internet and connectivity and the technology landscape has changed so much that these are some of the biggest superpowers in the world. I watched a video on Alibaba Group yesterday uh, which CNBC had done and on the Alibaba headquarters. If you go and watch it on YouTube, you will be amazed how fantastic uh, the technology they use. Uh, by the way, I interviewed Alibaba Group's uh, managing director for Australia and New Zealand in a um, Futurizer business series of interviews. Her name is Maggie Jo. Maggie Jo joined Alibaba Group in the early days, was also the executive assistant for uh, Jack Ma, who is uh, the man who created this uh, uh, legendary organization, go and watch that. Uh, go to our net, uh, go to YouTube, go to the Net Stripes channel, and subscribe to that channel because we got some amazing interviews happening. I'm interviewing the managing director of Zero. I've interviewed the managing director for Amazon Web Services, 
and there are lots of other interviews coming. We have the Minister of Small Business, Michaelia Cash there, Kate Carnell. So lots of great interviews, go and watch them and lots of small business owners as well. All right, so by 2020, there are going to be 20 billion connected devices. So that's the connectivity I was talking about. This is the internet of things. So it's not just people connected. I spoke about, we'll have the whole world connected, but that we are going to have uh, devices connected as well. And soon they say we'll have a trillion devices connected by 2025 time frame. That's a lot. So uh, imagine a world, not just people connected, but devices connected, cars, airplanes, everything. And we'll, because of the artificial intelligence and some of the technologies that are, that are at play, we'll have a world where you and I and our children and your friends and family and our colleagues will can know anything, can know anything from anywhere, anytime. You might laugh at me when I say it. Imagine if you had the intelligence and the knowledge of Einstein or the uh, EQ of uh, emotional quotient and the knowledge of Tony Robbins, or the you know the humility and the abilities um, uh, of, uh, of of Mahatma Gandhi of you know providing leadership uh, through being so, such a simple man. Um, and you might laugh at me when I say this, but it's possible. Um, not too long ago, this was last year. They went and digitized Tony Robbins. They went and listened to every part, every discussion Tony Robbins have, has done, every lecture he has given. They went and interviewed him. And this whole process of digitizing Tony Robbins took nine months, only nine months. Now they have Tony Robbins on the computer. So if you go and ask that computer, anything, it'll answer you just the way Tony Robbins would answer through artificial intelligence. Isn't that amazing? Now think about this. You can now take that computer and you can replicate that, make copies of this a million times for nearly free. So you and I can have the power of having Tony Robbins on our smartphones. Same with Einstein and same with so many other people. So while Tony Robbins' digitization project took nine months, the next project took only three months. Now imagine that. If you take Elon Musk and if you can digitize him, Bill Gates and digitize him, and Warren Buffett and digitize him. That's, that's phenomenal. Human longevity, 60 is going to be the new 100 because of all the technology that's happening. You'd be laughing at me as I say it, say this because we know we are in this global pandemic and people are dying. But if you take longevity as a whole, we are living much longer and we will live much longer. So we better plan for that as well. So this is this whole concept of acceleration, of acceleration. I'll let you read this. Um, there are seven concepts here, and you might think, I, I've already introduced you to a few. Some of it you might think, hey, how is this going to happen? If you have that question, go, go to the um, uh, Q&A and ask me those questions, and I'll come back to you on that. Uh, time abundance, I had to explain that. Um, but think about it, with, with the pandemic, we have more time than we had because we're not traveling as much. People used to spend two, three hours a day traveling to their workplaces. Now we're working remotely and dealing with people across the world and hopefully we'll be saving lots of time there alone. But as technology improves and it becomes more efficient to do things, through innovation as per this program, we'll be saving more time as well. A lot of people tell me, a lot of business owners in particular tell me, Dinesh, I'm very time poor. This is one of the commonest things I hear from business owners. I am time poor. 
Now, let me ask you another question. The reason you started this business because you wanted to have more time and more money. So why is it that you are time poor? Again, it's about focus. It's about strategy. And I, uh, for those who attended my last uh, webinar, by the way, it's on YouTube. Go and watch that. Uh, I talk about how to become more time efficient, how to save a lot of time, and how to take away about two thirds of the time that you're wasting on the wrong things. Because if you set your strategy and you keep to that, you can save a lot of time in one aspect alone by not serving customers who are not really your ideal customer. This is not only what I'm saying, every one of those businesses who've had transformation, tell me, Dinesh, that's one of the best things that have happened to me. By the way, there are some great books to read. The Future is Faster Than You Think by Peter Diamandis is a great book. He's written this with Stephen Kotler. Uh, if you want to have a read, have a read of it. You can go and watch him on YouTube as well. Peter Diamandis is the guy who started the International Space University. He's, he's one of these people who works with the likes of Google and Elon Musk and all these people. And one of the me mega uh, uh, innovators, uh, influencers when it comes to innovation in this world. Peter was uh, inspired by a man called Arthur C. Clarke. Most of you would have heard of Arthur C. Clarke. He wrote the book, uh, Space Odyssey, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which became a movie. And by the way, I used to know Arthur C. Clarke as a kid because he lived two suburbs away from where I lived, actually in the next suburb. Um, um, I grew up in Colombo in Sri Lanka and Arthur C. Clarke who lived there and he was a family friend. My first boot camp was a space boot camp I attended. And, uh, but I was, uh, I, unlike Peter, Arthur was a, a guy, I thought he was an old boring man uh, because I was only 14 when I met him. I was more interested in cricket and rugby at the time. So, um, so but Peter Diamandis was, um, really influenced by Arthur C. Clarke. So you might wonder, so what? So what? How does that relate to me? Let me answer that. Today, to go from an idea to a billion dollars has become so much faster because of all of these technologies. Now you might say, I don't want to make a billion dollars, but I know you want to be successful. That's why you started this business. So you have access to an abundance of wealth. You know, you might want to create a $10 million business or a $50 million business or a $100 million business. So that's your goal. You can set your goal, but it's, it's getting a, becoming so much more crowded here. Look at the success is becoming crowded. However, it's also getting more competitive. So if you don't know how to do it right, a lot of businesses go out of business. So you might as well learn the right way, learn the systems of innovation, learn the systems of growth and um, make best use of the opportunities. Have a read of this, okay? I, I'd like you to go to the chat and tell me what you're seeing here. Um, I want every one of you who is there to go to the chat and tell me what are you seeing here, okay? Uh, and we'll discuss that because it's important to have a quick discussion on what you're seeing and we'll take it from there. Come on, everyone, I want you in there. Clarissa, Alexandra. Joseph, Lake, Faith, Roger, let me see you. Let me hear from you. Everyone, I, I didn't mention a few other names. I can't see them, but uh, I could see the top few names. So please go and control is more important than ownership. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph, you're uh, my favorite person. No, no one else is uh, participating. Come on, guys, let's do this. 
Clarissa, Lake, Faith. Popular, big, known companies, very good. All right, so what are you seeing here is, uh, as Joseph said, these guys don't own the infrastructure. They don't own the properties. They don't own the resources. They are facilitating, okay? They've created an ecosystem of, of uh, buyers and providers or sellers, if you want to call them. And they've, they've created... Uh, they don't own the inventory, they don't own the infrastructure, all they do is they've created the facilitation. Now, they have done one thing definitely though. What, what each of these companies have certainly done is they have changed the way people experience um, the service in this industry. They've completely transformed the customer experience in each of these industries they operate. Okay, so, and hence, they've completely uh, wiped out the existing operators, not quite wiped out, but they've really made it difficult for the existing operators. Take the case of Uber. Nobody liked the experience of going in a taxi because at the beginning, I mean, take some time ago, uh, if you take five years ago, we didn't know what time, if you booked a taxi or a telephone, you wait till somebody answered the phone and they might give you attitude. I have got attitude, no doubt you have too. And then you have, you have to wait till the taxi comes and the taxi often doesn't turn up on time and that you might not get a person who's polite and, uh, and the taxi may not be clean. Or if you hail something, you don't know what, when the next taxi is coming and they might not even stop, right? Now, Uber completely changed the customer experience in this industry. And that's what happened. Airbnb changed the customer experience. Netflix changed the customer experience. And that's what all these businesses have done. So my question to you is, most of you guys here, you understand your industries intimately. You know what works in your industries. You also know what doesn't work in your industries. And there lies the opportunities to make change and create innovation. So how would you look at the areas in your industry that are not working? How can you change the customer experience in those industries, in your industries? I want you to have a think about it. Maybe write that down somewhere so that you can spend about an hour at another time pondering this question. If you notice, several of these businesses started pre or post GFC. This is the GFC was one of the biggest crises the world had after the um, uh, the depression we had, the Great Depression in 1929. And GFC was huge; millions of people lost their jobs, thousands of companies went bankrupt. Thousands of uh, big businesses who, who had existed for 100 years closed down because of the GFC. Yet a lot of those companies that I shared with you started pre or post GFC. So the message here is that we are going through a crisis right now. A bunch of companies are going to be coming up through this crisis. Can one of them be yours? Now, the digital acceleration process that I, uh, I want to share with you, I want to, uh, if I go back to uh, this example here, all these companies, if you take Uber, and let's take Airbnb for an example, they operate in this area of, if you look at digital acceleration, the way I have presented here, there's one element called scale, and the other element called ideas. So if you take Uber or Airbnb, take Uber for instance, they operate with the S which is staff on demand. So the people who drive their cars are staff on demand, based on demand, the number of drivers get the jobs. They use the crowd and community 
to become their customers. They have algorithms that based on, if you book a te- uh, an Uber from your home, they will, the algorithm will get you to the closest driver who is not uh, on a ride right now. And if that driver is on a ride, they will make sure that they will give you the timing of when that ride is going to finish. And the algorithm will tell you the driver will be there in 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever that time is. They use leverage assets because it's not their cars. It's the cars that are owned by the drivers. It's the same with Airbnb. It's not their hotel rooms like Hilton or Westin or any of those big chains have to have. This is the uh, Airbnb uses leverage assets. So it could be your home or, or your neighbor's home. And they have engagement between their communities um, and their uh, staff on demand. Now, on the other side, we have ideas. And I is for interface. Interface is the app or the website. They have a dashboard so that if a driver um, looks at their dashboard, they can see how many trips they have done, how much they have earned for the day, for the week, for the month. And similarly, we can look at our dashboard and see how much we have spent, what even our rating is. And and they do a lot of experimentation. Innovation is all about experimentation. They're constantly experimenting with new things and new ways and, um, and even pricing and algorithm changes. Facebook does the same, Instagram does the same, Google does the same because experimentation experimentation is a very important part of innovation. And of course, the drivers have autonomy and we have autonomy if we are ordering a a car, you know, or or getting, booking a place to search the best place based on reviews. But the drivers have autonomy, that's the main thing. And they use social technology to get the message out. So there you go. Um, uh, so this is, if, you, if you're thinking of digital acceleration, building innovative products, here's something for you to consider. There are, t- there are um, ten, uh, 10 elements here that you can consider. By the way, the good news is you don't need to use all 10 elements. You probably can start with four and then keep adding on. There you go, some good news. Did you find that useful? Hands up if you found it useful. All right, thank you very much. All right, the digital acceleration. Now we have external factors and internal factors, okay? So that's um, the, the, the scale part of the external factors and the ideas part of the internal factors. If you wanna know more about uh, building exponential companies and, and, and that uh, this, uh, the digital acceleration process I spoke about, this, there's a great book by Salim Ismail, again, Salim uh, um, and Peter Diamandis, they work together. Peter Diamandis has also written the foreword of this book. Um, and I've, um, there's another book called Exponential Transformation, which is more a handbook of building an exponential organization. I have read them both. Uh, they're both excellent books. Uh, if you're thinking of buying one, buy the first one. Uh, the one on the left. He's a small business owner. He had an idea. He left his job to start a business. He followed a process. He did some simple innovations. He created a strategy. He then created a strong online brand and online presence and some innovative web solutions. And he had to take on some big competitors. But the great thing is he did that And he built a business and did seven figures in little over a year. This is unbelievable. Um, um, This is Shea King and his partner, Sam Cliss. They're amazing people. They started this business. I have only Shea's face here, but I have a video on YouTube where Shea and Sam are both speaking to uh, actually separate videos. They're talking about their journey. 
They're amazing people. They built a corporate events and conference business, and they had to take on some of the largest com competitors in Australia. And some of these were global companies. And they took them on and won. It's about having the right strategy and having the right system. And they did this within a year, by the way, or a little, I think it was a little over a year. Here's a doctor. This doctor, again, had, had to resolve some major pain points in his industry. He also was frustrated because as a doctor, he had little time with his family. He wanted to spend more time with his family, but he also wanted to resolve a huge problem, a huge cost on the Medicare system which the government was bearing, uh, which was every time you want to get a sick note when you're sick, you have to go and see a doctor and the Medicare system pays for it. And if you're working for government or for a corporate company, you have to take a sick note, which, which is ridiculous. But at the same time, you don't want to be like Dr. Dodgy, provide an online sick note to people. So he found a system that he could diagnose people through video conference. If you, and he only gave a sick note if you had a nasal problem, which you can diagnose, or a, or a throat-related problem, or a bronchial-related issue. These can be diagnosed. But if you have a headache or a stomachache, they can't be diagnosed. Again, this guy went on to hire over 10 doctors within a year. He hired, I think, 20 doctors in his second year and sold the business in around three years. Today, he's operating as an advisor and a speaker, um, uh, helping other medical practitioners to innovate and grow. Again, we help these guys to come up with a strategy and come up with their innovative web solutions in a way that worked and with the innovations they needed. Here's Anne-Marie Cade. Anne-Marie Cade was a lawyer. She uh, operated as a lawyer, had, didn't have many, much uh, joy in the first seven years, didn't even have a website. Uh, you know, when you're not doing too well, you have poor cash flow, your confidence levels are really low. You know that, you know how it feels. And, um, and she also was a mother of three, so she had limited time for her business. And, and you can imagine the frustration you go through, not much time, not much confidence, cash flows are really poor. She changed her paradigm. She got the right knowledge, built the right strategy, created some innovations, some simple innovations I'm gonna share with you in a little while. And then she became one of the top three legal innovators in the world in a three-year period. I'm telling you, I spoke to her today because I wanted to get her permission to put some stuff here uh, that I was going to present. And then the best part was she sold her initial company called DLM, DLLM or Daniel Liu Lemusier Legal. Um, and now she has another company which is called Divorce Right. So, Look at Anne-Marie, um, this is, I needed to get her permission today and that's why I spoke to her. Uh, she won the Chair Churchill Fellowship for 2020, which is a highly prestigious award. And that gave her 20 or 30,000 or $40,000, I don't know, some big amount nevertheless to go overseas and do research in this area of business that she's pursuing. She uh, has been, uh, I saw on LinkedIn recently, she, uh, uh, has been a finalist uh, for the Australia Law Awards, not in just one category, in multiple categories. She was uh, billed as one of the top eight women in legal tech uh, uh, in Australia. Um, and um, she won the Women in Law Awards in 2018, 17, 16, et cetera. So there you go. Uh, and these are just a few of them. And this is a woman who, and she didn't even have a website. And now imagine her level of confidence. It's at a completely different level because what happens is when your cash flow improves, you become more confident. And as you become more confident, you get better ideas. You know, when your cash flow is down, your morale is down, you're not getting ideas because you're just trying to survive. So there are a few things you need to do before you get to the idea generation stage, if your cash flows are low, and I'll talk about that as well. 
Here's Sonia Ray, she runs a gym. She started a fitness business to follow her dream. She left a technology company that paid her a big amount of money as an executive. She struggled and spent all the money she probably saved in a two to three year period and had poor income. Again, confidence drops when that happens. She was frustrated with all the digital marketing she was doing, but then she followed this digital transformation process that Netstripes created and she tripled her revenues in an 18 month period. And again, she's on YouTube talking about her experience. Go to the channel and watch her. She talks about when that switch happened, okay? And that's what's important. When does, is the switch going to happen for you? That's important. So Sonia Ray talks about that switch. She said she was doing all these things and nothing really changed. There were little improvements, but suddenly the switch happens and you have been incre not incremental revenue, you have transformational revenue growth. During COVID, she still succeeded. You know, she runs a gym, right? But because she was able to pivot, because she had this digital and marketing infrastructure that helped her to pivot by innovating, she was able to grow her business and retain her profitability and grow her profitability. So that's why this session is called Innovation for Profitability. In the first month of July, the first month in the financial year, she achieved the target for the whole quarter of the 2021 financial year, which is beautiful. So now she expects to grow her business by 100%. Um, this is, uh, if you go to her website during COVID, this is what she did. Uh, she went um, and said, due to COVID-19, all our classes are virtual. Download and set up guide, the setup guide here and, um, and you can join a virtual class. So she took every one of her programs online. She used to have a gym in a garage and people would come to a gym, but she realized that people still wanted to get fit and took her classes online. Now she has customers from across the world. As you can see, this looks really crap um, here because she just went and made a huge bubble there. Now it's looking great. She says, join your fitness class here and put the rest of the information on top. So uh, it's about pivoting fast and then making sure you, um, you're getting your act together a bit later. So if you come to a website, it looks like that now. Next page, you come down, it looks like this. And if you come down a bit below, you get a timetable with a whole list of classes. You click on a class, you come to a selection button, you book online. So everything is automated. She doesn't have to have people, nobody answers the telephone. People book online and they register online. Everything. People get an email that comes through and says, um, with a link to the class and everything is online. So tip one, use software that can help automate and provide self-service. Add-on software is not expensive to create these uh, calendaring and registering and then some of the follow through emails that go. It takes a bit of doing, but it's not expensive. That's what I want you to know. Create new products and services that meet new needs. So she used to have live classes, but with COVID she couldn't. So she created new classes, they were all online. But the beauty of it was all her competitors closed down. And suddenly she realized there were a whole lot of fitness trainers who were free. And not only the stuff she did traditionally, but there were Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, and all types of different people, skill sets that she wasn't doing. And she introduced all of that here. And then she would say, did it online and she has now customers, not just from Willoughby in New South Wales, from people across the country. So what did she do? She created more training programs each of, and she had 20, over 20 programs. She had lots of people coming uh, for her sessions, people from different geographies. She added new trainers. I went through all of that, okay. So let's see what Sonia Ray did. Now I showed you earlier what you can do, what those big companies do, 
This is what Sonia Ray did when she did the digital acceleration and create, took her business digital. What she's done is she's taken a business digital. She's digitized a business. So for her to add new customers is zero cost. Are you with me? Now for any one of us, if in a traditional world to add new customers is a huge cost. For Sonia Ray, it's zero cost. In her traditional business, too, she had a limit she can have in a garage gym. She could have only a limited number of people per class. Now, look at this. She can have people from across the country, and to add people costs zero. Everything's automated. How can you do this? This is not about Sonia Ray. This is about you. What can you do? So why not you? Okay, so we've discussed about others. Why not you? So the issue is a lot of people say, yes, I want to do innovation. And people say yes to innovation, but we are creatures of uh, you know, habit and change is hard. And that's the biggest issue people have. So we've got to commit to reinvent and futurize your business. So each of us have to, we have to commit to reinvent our businesses. And then we've got to futurize our business through that commitment we make. Again, I, I want to share this uh, with you, you know, because it is fully worth doing it. The opportunities are there. It is becoming easier and easier to build a billion dollar business. Um, it wasn't long ago that we didn't have any billion dollar Aussie success story. Suddenly we got Atlassian, then we got Canva, then we got uh, Afterpay, then we got these, um, uh, I think they're called, what are they called? Uh, Air Wallocks. And so many other businesses will be coming through and we'll hear of them. Canva went from not even a billion dollars to 8 billion in like 18 months. So here are some innovation tips for your business. And these are some of the tips that those uh, innovators, the small businesses that I shared with you used. They use customer portals to make sure that customer information is stored and customers have access to that their information without having to telephone you and call you and, and spend your time in theirs. They used online forms, in, in, in simple online forms in ways that created uh, online wills and things like that. They used a single, uh, they used one single offer as opposed to having a, a thousand offers being really focused in their areas of business. They kept uh, stuff online and so have a quick read of the balance. I won't read everything. I'm sure you can read much faster than I can explain to you. And then we'll go through a few examples. Here are some of the online um, uh, automation things you can do. Um, you can do the online appointment scheduling. There are simple pieces of software that are cloud-based software that you can use uh, to do this efficiently. There are plugins that you can use if you're doing WordPress. There are online payment platforms, there's event registration management software, and there's so much software in each of these areas that if you want to use, you can add on. So I'm gonna take customer portals and online forms and use an example of one of the small business innovators I used earlier. This is DLLM or Anne-Marie Cade's business as she started, she had a conveyancing business. So if you're a conveyancer, people are always calling you and asking you for documents. They also have to give you documents um, when it comes to buying properties and so many documents. People also come call you five years late and ask, hey, what about, have, can you send me a copy of that uh, property I brought, uh, the, the deed or something of that nature? Now that, is a huge overhead on a small business. But what this business did was they created a portal. This is like a um, protected area where a customer can sign in and all their information, all their documents are there. It's like a Dropbox, but this is a more secure Dropbox. It's all in one place. 
what 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 else did she do? She created uh, online wills so that people can come in and do a will after hours. Because typically, if you want, if you're working and you want to do a will, you can't go during office hours uh, because you're working. And if you, after office hours, most of the law firms are closed. So online wills is a really smart way of doing things. And how do you do it? Using online forms and a simple workflow process. Let me take you that medical doctor example. He used portals, he used online forms, he's kept st stuff online. And here's Dr. Sicknote. People could come in here and register to do a online, you know, this is e-health. E-health is, uh, you know, with COVID, so popular now. It wasn't even allowed legally in 2015. Um, they had to get special permission. They had to get AMA approval. They had to go do a whole bunch of legal stuff. Okay. And these guys really thought of this process along with us, how to do this really good. And we help them to create a strategy and the technology that backed the strategy so that they could go and um, do, the, do the innovations they envisaged, envisioned, and launched it in a very successful way. Uh, this said online payments on a, a process flow and make a secure documentation uh, so that all the information is stored securely. Uh, and uh, people could do a video conference um, through Skype or uh, in those times it was Skype and not Zoom as it is today. Hopefully I've given you a few tips um, and uh, that has been useful for you. Here's a really cool example. This is a company who um, had a few properties. This, is a this, this business owner came to us when we ran the digital boot camp with the Cessna Council. There were about 40 people. It was a two day session. It was an amazing session. And David Harris was seated at the back, but he was listening very carefully. And he realized how he can take all his properties and then get add more properties if he wanted, if he creates a portal, like Airbnb type of portal. What you're seeing on here is, is, is an assistant which is using AI, by the way. Okay, and he marketed himself and and a very clever guy. He attends most of our webinars when we run them. So you might ask, where do I start? And how do I start? The place Sonia Ray and all these people started was this whole digital transformation process. So in Sonia Ray's case, this is the lady who did the gym or had the fitness business. She, uh, as I mentioned, struggled initially, maybe 18 months to three years. But when she got this right, she got success within 12 months. And then within an 18 month period, she tripled her revenue. And like you're doing today, you're getting the awareness. The next stage is to build the knowledge and strategy. And strategy is fundamentally important if you want to succeed online. Once you've done the strategy, which comes in three parts, your customer strategy. Again, when you wanna innovate, it's all about customers because it's your customer's life that you're gonna make better through these innovations. Your competitor strategy you must get right and you've gotta get your uh, product service strategy, whatever you're innovating right. And these are very crucial to get right on this strategy stage. The next thing you have to get right is you have to make sure your online brand design communicates your innovations really clearly. And this is not about website. This is way before you get to website. This is, you need to work with a world-class brand designer who makes sure they embody your customer strategy, your brand essence, why you're running this business, your unique value proposition, your competitor strategy, and your unique products and services in a way the customer comes and sees you online, whether it's your website or your social media, gets the message immediately. 
the language, the visuals, they're so clear, they understand that. And it is only once you've done that, you get on to building an innovative web solution. So you don't do, and before you build a web solution, you need to get your strategy right. You need to do some user testing to test out some of those assumptions we are making. And that's an important part of innovation that I'm not going, don't have the time to do today. Okay, it's then ultimately once you've done this stuff, you build your web solution. You've got to build an innovative web solution. Again, this is not expensive because the system net stripes are created. And then once you've done that, you've got to launch and promote your solution. So when we did that with the different types of customers, there were different strategies for every customer because the industries are different, the geographies are different, and the times are different. And then what you do is you continue to go and look at the data and you review and improve. And the good thing about digital is everything is data driven. You have data whether when you're promoting, uh, when you're driving traffic to your website, how many people are coming to your website, how many people are seeing your promotions and looking at the data, you review and improve. And you continue this cycle of review and improve until you achieve your first year's goals or the six month goals, whatever those goals you put in. Typically, it's a 12 month goal from launch. And that's when you get real return on investment. People say, oh, how am I gonna get return on investment? There's no return on investment until you hit your goal. That's what I call return on investment. So everything here has to be focused on your business goal. Why did I create this company? What's my financial goal for that 12 months? And you've got to achieve that financial goal. No point in waiting and no point winning prizes and all this stuff if you're not achieving your financial goal. So it's about building a digital and marketing infrastructure for your business. So this is what Sonia Ray did. This is what Dr. Sikno did. This is what... Um, um, Forefront events did. This is what hundreds of businesses that we have helped have done to build this uh, digital and marketing infrastructure in a robust way that even during crisis, you can pivot and you can pivot your business in quick time like Sonia rated when I shared with you what she did during COVID. And so many other businesses who pivoted during that time, they were able to do it because they had a solid digital and marketing infrastructure. And that's exactly what it should look like if it was your business. So where do you start? You start with building your digital competence, getting the right knowledge and the, and the digital strategy. It doesn't take years, it doesn't take weeks, it doesn't take months. You can do that within a day. I'm telling you, that's, the process Netstripe, Netstripes have created. Once you've done that, you've got to build a digital infrastructure. That is that innovative web solution, the online brand design, and then to make sure your strategy is nutted down. And you create a strategic blueprint for your business. All that can be done and launched in about eight weeks if we can work with your teams or with yourself and you have a very clear way of doing it because we... The strategic process is so important. And I, I will share with you how we do that. And then only you start your ongoing promotion again in a very focused way. This is how you build a digital and marketing infrastructure that supports innovation. You first create your strategic framework, your goal setting, you set the direction, get Get the customer strategy, the service strategy, your competitive strategy, right? Your unique value proposition. Then you go to the brand design and UX, use experience so that when somebody sees you on, online, there's instant uh, credibility, instant trust. That's what we want. And the message gets, sinks into the customer. And once you've done the 
online brand design and the user experience design, then you go into web development. Again, you don't have to worry, worry about that. We've created a framework for small business owners to do this you know, in quick time, in rapid time, but also affordably. Once you've done that, then you start promotion. Again, promotion is about making sure we help you to create the, the promotional uh, expertise within your business. Uh, we can do it for you, for those who want us to do it, but we prefer to build that expertise within your business so that the money, your money is retained within your business. Your intellectual capital is built within your business. Your intellectual competence for digital marketing and promotion is retained in your business. And you don't have to use agencies to do the work for you. So where do you start? You start with the steps one and two of the digital uh, infrastructure, you know, the transformation process I shared with you, it's with knowledge and strategy. To do that, we created Futurize Foundation. It takes only, um, it takes you six hours. It's less than a day to get the knowledge you need to, to create that strategy for yourself. And once you've done that, you sit down with one of our digital strategy experts who have a minimum of MBA with many years of business uh, and um, um, digital knowledge who will sit down with you and help you to craft that strategy for you, an online strategy for you. Um, we, uh, in this digital, um, the Futurize Foundation is an online program. It's a condensed version of a um, digital bootcamp that has been attended by over 3000 people. We used to run it over two days. And um, this uh, is better than that because it's condensed, it takes less time, but more importantly, you have lifetime access to it because it's an online program. If you attended a two day program, you after you leave it, you don't have the video of the entire program. You have notes, probably have some good memories and you have some advisors to work with, but this is, I think, better. You have lifetime access, so you can watch it and re-watch it whenever you want it. So we start on with reinventing in troubled times. How do you invent during these times? How do you reinvent your business during these times? How do you create a strong digital presence? And how do you create those innovations that you need in terms of customer strategy for your online success? How do you uh, innovate? How do you uh, create an online advertising strategy? How do you, what are the tips and tricks that you can use as you start promoting your business? All that is covered in this program. So um, it, it has lifetime access, I'm telling you. It comes with the, the digital strategy. Um, um, and this is a framework we have created for small business. Um, we used to charge over $500 for the digital strategy work alone when we used to do it for the big banks and some of the big retailers. And all this um, is offered to you and I'll share with, with you some of the pricing. Now, in, the, in this case, if you want to talk to us and uh, talk to one of our experts and get more information, uh, Faith will share a link with you. If you click on that link, you can register to have a quick chat with any of our teams who may be able to, to help you um, uh, to, uh, to have a discussion about your business, uh, uh, the journey you want to take, uh, to discuss some ideas, and that's fine. So you can book online. Faith will share the link here. Um, and um, Faith, are you able to do that? Much appreciated. Thank you so much uh, for the advisory. By the way, the link that you see uh, on this page is, over here is um, will guide take you there. All right. So the biggest issue all of us have is we want innovation, but how do we change because we are creatures of habit? we got to make a decision and it is in this decision that we can help you to build great companies even during crisis. Really com companies are, the great companies are improved by crisis and we'd like to work with you to make your company a great one. Uh, and I want you to imagine the possibilities for your, for your business. 
Uh, I want you to reimagine the possibilities for your business and then um, write down three things that can help you to grow exponentially. You know, I'm not asking you to write five things, but just three things. And then talk to one of our experts. Uh, I shared with you that link where you can make booking. Uh, and through this, you can have a discussion about how you can take your business to another level. Uh, each of our digital strategies, I don't think I said, have worked with at least a thousand small business owners. So you, you know you're talking to people who have worked with not just big business, but small business owners as well. So let's have a quick summary. Um, uh, I won't take too long. I want you to um, you know, think about futurizing a business through innovation. To do that, develop your top 10 innovation ideas for the next 20, 24 months, okay? Uh, start with three, then add another three, then add another four. Uh, think about all those technology drivers I spoke about, artificial intelligence, connectivity, 5G. How is that going to change your industry? Go to YouTube and check, as I said, we spoke about sensors, you know, you know, the Internet of Things, virtual reality, augmented reality, 3D printing. How is that going to change your uh, industry? What are the tech drivers that it's going to transform your industry out of the ones we just spoke about. Think about them and write them down. And there's a formula to achieve success online. I shared with you, uh, your job is to build a robust digital and marketing infrastructure for your business. It is this digital and marketing infrastructure once built and take you to a completely another level. This is what the really good companies have done. I told you we have one of the most effective systems in the world for small and medium businesses to transition from traditional business models to digitally successful businesses. And it starts with the knowledge and strategy. It starts with step one and step two, okay? Let me show you how to do it. I shared with you earlier, it starts with the digital competence. We call it the Futurized Program, where we sit down with you and um, where you sit down and do this program. People love, who've done it, they love it. When we did it, uh, I said we did this, over 3,000 people attended our digital bootcamp. There are hundreds of uh, testimonials on YouTube you may want to check. And there's over 90, I think 95% uh, satisfaction. So this is a program that you will like. On our website, it's only 596, okay? I think it was a steal for a thousand. <coughs> but we wanted to make it affordable for businesses during COVID. So on our website, you can go there and the online fee is only 596. But I want to tell you something. Because uh, we work with multiple industry associations, multiple partners when it comes to uh, local government, uh, industry bodies, et cetera, they have asked us, are you able to offer our partners, offer the organizations who attend your webinars a lower price and we have worked with them and we have come up with a price of 298 faith uh, if you can share the link um, uh, of uh, I, i'm not saying faith faith are you there um, guys if if you want to uh, faith hasn't shared the link but um, um oops so i'm sorry i can't give you this offer but if you really want this offer uh call us on one three hundred ten um triple eight zero um that's one three hundred ten triple eight zero and um uh, and ask uh, that you be given this uh offer that was offered at this webinar okay this the reason i'm asking you to telephone is because this pricing is a very special pricing it's not on our website or you can contact us through our website and say you attended this webinar and we will make sure it's available um, so There are some other great webinars coming up, guys. Um, 
uh, Digital Marketing Essentials, if you haven't attended, is coming up on the 19th and the 3rd of December. And I would love you to tell your friends uh, to join us. Uh, by the way, um, uh, there is the same, um, today's webinar being repeated on the 25th of November and the 9th of December. So join us for that. If you like this webinar, uh, please let us know. Uh, go to YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure that you press like if you like something, share the channel with your friends. Uh, there are lots of great stuff coming up. Let me answer some of the Q and A's before I finish up. Thank you so much for your attendance today. Uh, I, our vision uh, at NetStripes is to empower 1 million small and medium enterprises to accelerate their growth through digital innovation because we know when we help you grow your businesses you will together create millions of jobs across the planet is there a better time than now to create jobs uh, during this pandemic people are losing jobs you know if we can help you to retain the jobs that you're creating and uh, grow those uh, businesses grow your businesses in a way you create jobs that will be a dream come true for us. Thank you so much for your attendance. I really appreciate your time. Let me answer some questions. Question number one. Innovation seems very hard for small and medium businesses because we don't have the time. Business owners uh, like us are time poor. All right, this is a good question. I think I touched on this during the session. Innovation is not the domain of big business, business alone. If you think of all the innovations that have been created around the world, they have started uh, and from small businesses. Google was a nobody when they started. They were just two guys. They, they went and tried to sell their business for $700,000 to Excite.com, which was the second biggest uh, um, search engine at the time. And those guys didn't want it. Or they were going to do the deal and they dropped out at the last one. Imagine Excite.com is not, nobody even knows them now. Uh, Google had to go and speak to 350 people, I think, to get investment in them. If they didn't, if they stopped at 300, maybe they wouldn't have been a Google. There wouldn't have been a Google today. Apple wasn't a big company, right? So nobody started big. Airbnb struggled for five years on earning 200 to 400 dollars a week, for God's sake. Okay, so innovation is not the domain of big business. Innovation is typically created by entrepreneurs who have a dream, who will chase that dream, and who will who will change and evolve and in the face of adversity will continue to keep working, doing, taking small steps. It's not hard, it's not easy, but it's not impossible either. It's about being relentless. Netflix, they face so many challenges. When they went to meet um, uh, Blockbuster in early 2000, I think Netflix uh, started in 96, if I'm not wrong. They were, they were four years old and they, they thought they were going broke because they couldn't, they were expecting to have an IPO and there was an IT bust. <laughs> and when the IT bust happened, they had to do something. I think it was in 2001, if I'm not wrong. They went to see Blockbuster. Blockbuster laughed at them. They had no other solution, so they can't do IPO. Blockbuster won't support them. They just had to survive. And look at Netflix today. They were just relentless, relentless, relentless. So uh, even big companies, if you're from a big company, can innovate. Microsoft was like dead. Nobody looked at them uh, six, seven years ago. Or under a new CEO, they've completely changed. They are one of the biggest companies to watch when it comes to technology these days. When, it, when, it, when you heard the name Microsoft, you thought they were big, boring company. They're not boring anymore. You watch this space. They own LinkedIn, they own Skype, they nearly bought TikTok. <laughs> and they're making some massive moves um, um, in, in the cloud space as well. So uh, guys, um, 
uh, if you are a small business, um, every every small business, every single individual business owner can innovate. Okay, let's go to question number two. Futurize Foundation. Uh, you say um, it doesn't, it takes, in, you can finish it in a day. Yes, uh, it takes only six hours. And some of the people who've done it have allocated a day, have done it in a day. Others haven't allocated a day, but they've allocated two or three hour slots and finished it in two days. Okay. But if you do that, you get to the next level. What is the next level? You have a fabulous, your knowledge goes to a completely different level. You're in a new paradigm of knowledge and you're operating very, in a very different way, in, a, in extremely, in a, in a lot more confident way. That's what the business owners who do it tell me, okay? Uh, we have had business owners at these events, uh, at these webinars who've done it, who tell people that. So it's not what I'm saying here. I'm just repeating what some people have told me. And then once you've done that, you sit down with a strategist and they will spend the time you require to get your strategy right. If it's an hour, it's an hour. If it's two hours, it'll be two hours. But they will spend the time to get your strategy right. Uh, we've created a strategy framework for small and medium enterprises, which somebody referred to as um, net stripes have democratized McKinsey style strategy so that small business can afford it. Because we had to change the way things operated because typically strategy takes two or three weeks to do, which small business can spend two or three weeks. And because we researched 8,000 businesses before we started NetStripes, we understood that these problems were there and we had to re completely reinvent the way that we did things. So do Futurize Foundation, register for it. It's a, it's a no brainer. We've made it so cost efficient. It's a negligible cost. And, and that cost can be claimed as a taxable expense. So there is zero cost for you. By the way, uh, to make it uh, so worthwhile for you, if you, if you buy Futurize Foundation in seven days, you say, this is not for me, tell us. Nobody will ask you any questions. They will give you a refund. Absolutely. Okay. Even if they do ask you a question, it will be after the refund has been given just to see what we can improve if there is. So far, we've not had to uh, give a refund, but please, if that is you, uh, it will be only uh, obligation. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciated your time. Um, um, look after yourselves. Have a great uh, uh, rest of the day um, and um, see you soon. Bye-bye.